Hey guys, so in this video, I'm going to be talking about the best practices for Forex traders. So what this simply means is, what are the top six things that you should always do as a profitable Forex trader, well, at least if you want to become a profitable trader. So I'm going to be, you know, dropping six bullet points, things that you should always do while trading Forex. So guys, if you want to find out more about this, I suggest you stick around to the very end of this video. Now guys, let's go over to the video. Hey guys and welcome back to my youtube channel my name is dapo willis once again it's amazing to have you guys back here as always now guys like i was saying earlier today i want to talk about the six best practices when it comes to trading forex so i've made um a list so i was you know doing a little thinking i was thinking to myself okay so what are the you know i always like to come on here and give you guys tips okay i try to help you guys as much as possible so i'm thinking what are the you know top six or top five things that you know could actually help my viewers you guys that watch my content what are the top five to six things that i feel could really help you guys so that every time it is you're getting into a trade or every time you're reviewing the market or you're doing your analysis you know it will kind of like guide you just be in your mind so and you always know guys i always like to drop this in what step by step format in bullet points so guys let us see what's cracking today now before i get into the nitty gritty of this video i need you guys to do me one little favor smash that subscribe button right there and drop this video a like and don't forget to comment on this video this is exactly how the videos get exposure and we can obviously help more forex traders you have to understand that i am on a mission i am on a mission to help a million forex traders yes the reason is because a lot of forex traders are just suffering they're sick tired and they're stressed out they're absolutely suffering and we need to change that more people need to be able to make money from the forex market and not just the broker so guys let's jump into the nitty gritties of this video all right guys so the number one thing when it comes to you know best practices as a forex trader the number one thing that i encourage you guys to always do is to first of all it's, it's quite simple and basic but a lot of people just don't know how to go about it the very first thing is you want to define the market structure for me this is paramount this is the very first thing i do and i usually always do this on a monthly time frame so what exactly is market structure what direction is this market heading in are we going up are we going down or are we going simply going sideways now once i'm able to determine whatever the what the hell this market is doing in the first place on a monthly time frame or a weekly time frame then I'll give you an example. Let's say, as at the time I'm shooting this video, let me look at a pair and see what pair, what direction a pair is moving in at the moment. So, from what I can see at the moment, AUD USD seems to be very bearish, especially on a monthly time frame. So, I will simply go on the monthly time frame and identify the direction, the flow of the river. What direction is this market heading to in the first place on a higher time frame? Okay. First things first, I want to know what exactly is this market doing what on a higher time frame. So once I can identify what the market is doing on a higher time frame, only then I will then you know imprint this in my brain. Only then will I scale down to a lower time frame and trade in that direction. So market structures are very important. Like if you scroll down my YouTube channel, you'll notice the very first thing I always ask myself is what the hell is this market doing in the first place? All I'm asking myself there is what is the market structure? This will then guide your trading decision on lower time frames. Okay, this will then guide your trading decisions on lower time frames because once I can identify if this market is moving south, once I scale down to lower time frame, my brain, my whole mind is just looking for sell opportunities. This way, if I see buy opportunities on lower time frames, but the higher time frame has told me sell, I would know that okay, this buy opportunity will either be a losing trade or very temporary okay so this is this is the hack okay higher time frame direction of the market what is the structure and if the higher time frame is moving sideways then i know that on lower time frames i shouldn't really be expecting big moves because if the higher time frame is, is ranging for instance 
the market isn't going to be trending, you know, 500, 600. It's just going to be going in a little, in a big range, right? So I will know that, okay, if I get in, I shouldn't be expecting to make anything more than 80 to 100 pips. So understanding market structure is actually very key and it should be the very first thing you should even think about whenever it is you open a what a forex chart. All right, guys, so the second best practice you guys should always do whenever it is you're analyzing and trading the Forex market is once you've been able to identify the structure of the market, the second thing you should always do is try and identify areas of value. Now, I do, I analyze my areas of value on weekly timeframes. That's where you see me, and I, this, is, this is where you see me come and plot my key levels. So areas of value are nothing more than areas whereby the market has respected a lot in the past. Now, why should we always trade from areas of value? It's because the market has told us historically that that level has, you know, been quite difficult to break in the past. And chances are that in the future, it's also going to give us some headache. I'll take that again. The market has told us that this level is a significant level because it has reversed from this, from this level previously. So how do you use areas of value to make profitable trading. So how do we use areas of value to make profitable trading decisions? It's very simple. Personally, what I, I like to use my area of value for two things. Um, so once I plot my levels, my key levels on weekly timeframes, I use it to, first of all, identify profit targets. Because a lot of people might buy or sell and just because of the fact that they cannot identify the key areas of value, they can be holding a profitable trade and then the market gets to that area of value and then the market reverses and they go from having a winning trade to a losing trade. And one thing about traders is if the market probably gives you 350 pips and then the market starts reversing against you, most traders feel that, okay, I've made 350 pips, this market must give me back my 350 pips. And then what happens is they end up holding that trade longer than they should. Happens to the best traders, it's to happen to me in the past. So area of value will save you from holding on to trades longer than you should hold on, hold on to them for. And the second way you can use areas of value, I like to use areas of value is when I scale down to lower time frames and I want to enter a trade, I don't enter a trade at key levels areas of value. I don't trade at those areas of values. I like to look for bounces. So let me put everything together in, in a clear perspective. I've been able to identify um, the market structure on a monthly time frame, and then I scale down to weekly time frame, and then I need to plot my key levels, my areas of value. So what I can do is, for instance, AUDUSD is bearish at the moment on a higher time frame. I'm going to wait for the market to bounce off of a resistant level bounce off of a resistance level not at, i'm not going to be selling at the resistance level i'm going to be trading the bounce off the level why because one thing about areas of value is especially on lower time frames don't forget we analyze on higher forex mastery students you know this forex mastery students you know this we don't trade at key levels we trade the bounce of key levels because guys one thing about areas of value is the fact that especially in lower time frames it is subject to a lot of market manipulation okay brokers i wouldn't say brokers let's call them the people who move the market okay i don't want to castigate brokers so the people who move the market they know that a lot of retail traders have orders at key levels they know that a lot of them want to sell if it's at resistance or they want to buy at support so what they usually do is they go and fake out the level so i like the market to go and fake out all the i call them dumb money traders i must i consider myself a smart money trader and i consider all my students on the forex masteries course um is i consider us smart money traders so guys on module five i speak about market manipulation this is very important very important module because I remember back in the days I used to get victim for this. I'll put my sell order, sell limit at key levels and expect that the market will get there and bounce off and then come down and make me all this profit. However, what used to happen was the market would get there, fake out the level, take my stop loss out and then start falling back down. So how you should use your key, your key levels is wait for the bounce. Always wait for the bounce off of these areas of value. 
So that's the second point. Use areas of value to your advantage. First thing I use area of value for is to enter my trade. I wait for the bounce, reject it. Go and run all the stops and then reject it. Send it back down like, aha, now you're ready to go, number one. Number two, I use areas of value to what set my profit target. So guys, um, obviously I'm going through these points bit by bit. I don't have my charts to explain all this, but on the Forex Mastery course, I actually go into this in D detail okay detail as to how you can plot these areas of value how you can use the bounties and how you can you know plot the levels and actually anticipate profit targets up to 1000 to 2000 pips is madness you think i'm joking scroll down my youtube channel you see me i'm, I'm projecting thousands of pips speak to the students they love this they, this is the first time they've been able to project and some traders have never been able to project 500 pips into the future. This first time traders are actually coming in and actually seeing that, listen, I can actually project thousands of pips into the future. But I'm not going to dwell on that too much. Let's go over to the next point. All right, guys. So the third point when it comes to market best practices after, out of our top six is being able to identify reversals. So this is so key because point number one, we covered... Um, we covered market structure okay you have to know where the market is going point number two areas of value take profit and entries and kind of like how to get into the market point number three you need to be able to identify reversals now a lot of people struggle when it comes to identifying reversals because i've seen a lot of situations whereby people are in trades and then you know there's probably like a lot of pips in profit and then for some strange reason the market just turns around now the question is how do you really identify reversals now a lot of so there's a module on the forex mastery course where i speak about is dedicated to reversals but i'm gonna give you guys kind of like um the ideology the idea behind how you can identify reversals in the market now for those of you who want to grab the course the link is going to be down in the description as as always now for me, how I identify my reversals and for me it's very important is I always like to look so reversals on higher time frames, for instance, the weekly. If I see a double top on the weekly time frame, I know that this whole bigger strength is about to change. Now, on lower time frames, how do you identify reversals? I identify reversals on lower time frames. Um, I identify, I give you an example. Let's say I'm in, I, I'm in a sell trade on GBP USD on a one hour time frame, and the market is collab collapsing, collab coming down, coming down, coming down. And then I notice that the market comes into not a major level of support, but I can see that there's a that level, you know, it's kind of like a support level, but it's a minor support level, right? And I see the market coming to that level. Ideally, I'm expecting that the market should break the level because the momentum is massive. We have an overall 1,000 pip to run. Let's say we, we've done our analysis and we have 1,000 pips to look into. We, we've done our analysis. We're heading for 1,000. We're heading for the home run. But then I notice that as the market is selling off on a lower time frame, um, I, I notice that obviously on lower time frames, you can see minor support levels, right? And then I noticed that on a one hour time frame, the market gets to a minor support level. We get there, we struggle around that area for a bit, and then the market bounces off of that level. I'm like, all right, cool. And then the market attempts that level again. Now, if on a one hour time frame, I see that we put it a double top at a level, oh, sorry, a double bottom, okay? A double bottom at that level, what I'll most likely do is I'll most likely move my stop losses from where they are slightly past break even. Now, what does all of this mean? On lower time frames, if you want to identify market reversals, it has to occur at a level. However, on higher time frames, reversals don't have to occur on any level. If I see a double top on a weekly time frame, best believe my entire bias is changing now when it comes to lower time frames if i see a double bottom or a double top whichever the case may be i will know that the market wants to go for a retracement this doesn't mean that the entire market is reversing it simply means that a retracement wants to occur i'm going to take this again 
on lower time frames when chart patterns occur like double tops and double bottoms the entire trend isn't changing it simply means that that market wants to stop falling temporarily and we want to go for a retracement to continue heading back in that direction however if i see a chart pattern be it double top double bottom head and shoulder and inverse head and shoulder if i see that form on a weekly time frame or a monthly time frame i don't need it to form at any key level once i see that bam it simply means that the whole trend is about to change so guys this is exactly how you go about deciphering but i see a lot of people make big trading decisions just because one, a one hour time frame showed you a double bottom i've seen double bottoms from on one hour time frames and the market comes back and crushes that support level that was holding that market previously you get what i mean so this is the difference one hour time frames don't really hold that much strength you get what i mean lower time frames don't really hold that much strength so i usually like to do my analysis on higher time frames and then execute the trade on lower time frames so all i'm going to be looking at on lower time frames as for those little i call them speed breakers right they're speed breakers doesn't mean that the car is going to stop going in the direction it just means that the car just wants to slow down climb the bump and continue going however at that time i will then start locking in profit because the market might want to go for an even bigger retracement that might stop me out in the process so this is the difference lower time frame ch um, chart patterns don't change trends higher time frame chart patterns change what the trend so guys once again like i'm saying i'm sorry i can't you know break this down you know into little chunks the forex mastery course will be able to help you do this and the link is going to be down below all right guys so the last tip i'm going to leave you guys with before i have to run off i've already been recording for about 17 minutes is please don't get distracted by the news um i remember starting off in the forex market i remember i used to watch the news on bloomberg i used to check forex factory every now and then i was so like zoomed into the market into the news and i just used to wait for them to say something serious and then want to trade that in the forex market hmm, the news only accounts for just five percent of market movement i'll tell you what actually happens in the forex market when it comes to news um there are only two news events that actually really move the market per se okay um overall like if you prorate it based on how many times the news releases have come out and how many times the markets have really really moved significantly you find out that there are only two major news events that actually get the market shaking that's non-farm payroll and fomc now when it comes to the news what i like to do is because i know that the news is nothing but a distraction right um i simply just don't trade on non-farm payroll fridays what i do is i wait for non-farm payroll figures to come out and then I execute my trade. Technicals will always win in this market. The overall trend will always win. There are several times whereby, you know, the market has been, let's say, bearish, and then non-farm payroll figures came out, it was really good, the market spiked back up, and then three to four days later, I noticed that the market corrected all the way back to its original trend. So what I'm trying to say here in essence is, don't be, don't be shook. The only traders that are really shook by these news releases are traders that are always looking at lower time frames. If you're always looking at lower time frames to make your trading decisions, it's going to shake you. But if you, for instance, like the Forex Mastery students, you have the bird's eye view of the market. You can see exactly where the market is going to, okay? It's just like a farmer that is probably looking at a particular season to plan his to harvest his crops or plant his crop whichever the case may be and he knows that i give you guys an example in in the uk we have winter from we got winter in the uk from october all the way up till march okay and then when summer comes around late april all the way back till september okay so you know these are the fixed seasons you know these are the fixed okay these are the key levels you know and then let's say sometime in summer it now snows you already know that the next day or next three four days you can't wear a winter jacket to go out because it's going to be the market and the, the, the weather is going to go back to status quo because this is the season 
Same thing in Nigeria as well. We know raining season is between April to October. So we know that. And then we know dry season starts in around after October. Is it October to April? I can't remember what the seasons are. Anyways, we all know that in December in Nigeria, if it rains in December on one day, we know that, okay, it's rained. But we know subsequent days... Is gonna get dry and very dry and very cold, okay? Because it's the hammer time season. So this is the same thing with news releases. It's just a distraction. Focus on the key trend. Focus on the bigger picture. So guys, ladies and gentlemen, I wanted to say a big thank you for staying to the very end. I don't know if I covered up to five points, but I, I I've actually written a lot more than this. Um, but I think this these ones are, are, are actually. The best one so i'm just going to quickly recap right so first one is define market structure before you get into any trade first thing is you want to define market structure second thing identify the areas of value like i said the forex mastery course is going to teach you guys how to do these things properly pay attention to reversal signs especially on higher time frames but on lower time frames if they occur on minor support and resistance levels best believe that that market was going for a retracement and yeah don't get fooled by the news events. They're nothing but a distraction. Thank you for sticking around till the end of this video, guys. I want to say a big thank you. It's been 21 minutes, the longest video. Thank you for staying to the very end. Don't forget to drop me a like and subscribe. Once again, the link to the Forex Mastery course is going to be down below. Guys, I'll catch you later. Take it easy and...